This is a house that I originally bought with only $1,200 out of my pocket. Stuff like this, they ripped the trim off. They duct tape the toilet. What the heck? It's like they had a fire in here. All right, so my maintenance guy told me the fire. He remembers the fire. In 2020, they decided to go that spring and the winter with no electricity in that home. They brought in kerosene heaters and they caught on fire. That's where the fire came from. Kerosene heaters, which I hate kerosene heaters with a passion. They are very much explicitly banned on every one of my rentals due to fire hazard. And now you know why, because they set fire to the house. This is a house that I originally bought with only $1,200 out of my pocket. This is one where I got royally screwed on coronavirus. Once the eviction moratorium started, the tenants that I had on here decided they weren't going to pay rent and more or less have not paid any rent out of pocket. I think they paid $200. I've tried to be fair to them. I think they paid $200 out of pocket in two years on this. The government came in, they paid $4,000, $5,000 of rent to try and catch them up, which didn't happen. We finally were able to evict them. I've had to evict like six separate tenants. They've tore the carpets out of here. They've destroyed the walls. Destroyed the floor, what the crap? I don't know what to expect if somebody's not been paying rent for two years. So they went two years, they paid me $200 worth of rent. The government came and paid me $4,000 worth of rent. But the problem is this is a $600 a month rental. And over two years, I should have been paid $14,000. So they owed me more or less 10 grand worth of rent. And they wanted to come in and offer me a hundred bucks a week or 200 bucks a week to catch up. And they tried to call me personally, try to get, they tried to get around my managers. And this is the condition of the house that it was left in. We had done a full renovation, all new carpet, all new flooring, redone the drywall where it needed done, repainted everything. And I mean, it's pretty well trashed. And that situation is bad. So stuff like this, they ripped the trim off. They've tore the, uh, drywall corner out. I mean, it's going to be full of trash during an eviction. Truck loads of trash out. There's, they duct tape the toilet. That's stupid. Who does that? See, <laughs> this is, this is a brand new toilet we put in. That's an old seat with duct tape on it. With HVAC tape. That's the aluminum metal looking tape. So they've totally trashed this rental. And you know, there's gonna be ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars worth of work to do here. And I'm out another ten thousand dollars in lost rent. This is just like what's gonna happen. And if I didn't have a partner on this, I would make it look nice and I would sell it. And a landlord would not buy this house, an owner occupant would. Someone that wants a house for 60, 50, 50, 60 grand. A lot of people are feeling like the real estate prices are gonna come down. There's gonna be a lot of affordable housing in the future because of the, the real estate crash. I don't know that we're gonna see it. Oh, wow. I'm gonna fall through the floor, you hear that? We redid all the subfloors in here, so that feels like a plywood sheet popped off. What the heck? It's like they had a fire in here. This looks, they had a fire in here. Look, you can see the imprint of the cross. It looks three-dimensional, but it's not three-dimensional. They had a fire in here. Of course, I didn't know anything about it. Holy crap, look at this. The only thing that would be worse here is if it said live, laugh, love instead of family, etched into the wall in smoke. What the crap? Had a freaking fire in here. Look at the ceiling, it's all... It looks terrible too. I'm gonna to turn this into a rental. Most landlords wouldn't. They would just sell because the market's still, I mean, our prices in Central have not gone down much, well at all. If you were in California, maybe they've gone down 5%. You would still sell this because there's still no oversupply of our property. My name is Brandon Schlichter. You might know me as Investment Joy on YouTube, TikTok, social media. I own over 130 rental properties. I own two car washes, a storage locker facility, a laundromat, a bunch of vending machines. I have over 1 billion views all over the internet. I wish that I had the information and the knowledge back then that I do today. Thankfully, I got a real estate license at 21 and it changed my life forever. I went from not knowing any 
anybody that made more than about $45,000 a year to suddenly I was around very intelligent real estate investors. We're not totally broke, weren't totally poor. I ran into a guy, his name was Joe. He was a truck driver, just like my dad. He was worth millions of dollars through investing in businesses and real estate. These guys showed me the ropes and it took me about eight years to go from talking to those people to buying my first properties. Then in the eight years over that, I started off with $25,000. I've reached a $10 million portfolio. My businesses are constantly growing and we're pulling in between $150,000 and $200,000 in revenue between my companies every single month. The goal with investmentjoy.com is to help you to get to where I am in a much quicker way than it took me. I learned a lot of lessons hard and expensive ways. We've compiled all this information into our Ultimate Joy program and our Insider Joy programs to help you get to where I am very quick without some of the struggles and some of the difficulties that I've had. If you're interested in doing this, book a call today with one of my agents. They're going to talk to you. They're going to go through what we have, and they're going to show you how we can help you here at Investment Joy to build true financial freedom and wealth. This is my 150 year old post, or sorry, 170 year old post office. Unfortunately, the tenant in the front unit passed away from cancer. His name was Don. He's in the background of a couple of my videos. Really great tenant. And unfortunately, with him passing away and us finally getting through six to eight evictions due to coronavirus, it's put us in a really weird bind with regards to having a lot of work do and fix units. In the midst of him passing away, somebody that knew him came in and robbed him or robbed the house that he lived in. So unfortunately, someone broke into his unit to which I need to inspect the damage and they essentially robbed him while the funeral was going on across the street, which is absolutely insane. I wish I could say that I've never heard of anybody doing this. That seems to be a common procedure if you know that somebody has some, something or you suspect that they have something of value. He was a really good guy. Everybody in the community loved him. So it's awful to know that he got robbed and I'm here to do my part to check inspect, make sure that the locks were damaged and try and get a plan together on how we're going to rehab his unit. I don't have a screwdriver on me. I probably could pop it pretty easy. Um, so what happened here was the chimney collapsed and it just put up black soot through everything. So it wasn't a fire, but it was pretty much smoke. And of course I had asked my guy that was here, not Shane, the other guy to go, Hey, clean this up and make it look nice. Here we are. There we go. So, all right, here's this wonderful place. Like I said, favorite tenant. He didn't take care of the place at all. We'll have to go through and just completely gut the unit. New floors, we'll do new countertop, new cabinets probably, get all the trash out. So we'll put LVT in here. Oh my gosh, this is an absolute dump. Yay, that's what I wanna be known for. Favorite tenant living in an absolute dump. This is better than where he had before he moved here. So, so place is kind of trashed, not a great rental. We'll fix it up, re repaint it, redo everything in here. Get it turned over, I'm guessing pretty quick. Cause this is a really good neighborhood. Worst rental, best neighborhood. So let's go look at the other one that they did work on. All right, so we're gonna go up here. That's still exposed. That was something I asked to be fixed a year and a half ago. And that's the problem with coronavirus is when the labor market's really tight, you can't fire anybody. So I don't fire anybody. And the problem is it's hard to find other people to do work. I don't know how many times I've had people show up, scam me for money. I'm at this point where I can start hiring new crew to get these projects that have been, I've asked or asked to be done almost two years ago. So I'm excited about that because places like this will be able to improve. And then the other thing, the value, I only paid 150,000 for this, we'll probably go up to the 400 range. Cool. All right, need to replace the floor. They had to redo the ceiling in here. Actually, it looks really good. They haven't finished the ceiling yet. A raccoon got in our furnace and it caused water to drip on the ceiling and ended up getting a hole. So, not too bad. And fix. It takes like three minutes to fix the seam in the floor and said they fixed it with duct tape. Fixed it with duct tape. The floors could be cleaned. They don't look super bad to me for being 170 year old floors. You guys can let me know in the comments what you think about whether these floors look good or bad being insanely old. So not too disappointed on this unit. It's looking pretty good. We'll get it turned over quick and probably rent it for 650 a month ish based on the neighborhood. The next door neighbors get $200 a night 
in their places. I did the numbers today and I'm down 14,000 a month in rent that I should be getting, but I'm not. I really have to have my tree guys go and take this and that giant sycamore down because we've got like maybe five years left on that tree before it comes down and crushes that house. I have to think how much that's gonna cost. My tree guy is very, very good overall. So it'll probably be 2,500 bucks to get both trees down, which I'm not super excited about spending. It is what it is. When I was directly managing all these places myself, everybody would want to talk to me and it was usually about stuff that I can't fix because I i don't do maintenance. That is a benefit of having somebody else manage your properties. You don't have to be the one with all the answers. All right, guys, make sure you like the video if you like this content. Make sure that you consider subscribing and hitting the bell to enable notifications. Thanks. <laughs>